Hey, hey, hi, good morning everyone, good Saturday, I hope you're good. Um, look, today what I've got to you, uh, I've got something for you, very, 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 like super, super, super cool, and uh, it's called the Malkata Palace, okay? So just before we... <clears throat> Just before we we we, we start uh, with the Marca with the royal palace of uh, Amen Amen I may not have the third, uh, which you know it, it's just amazing in itself. Like first of all, the Pharaoh Amen Amen H Amen not have the third was an unbelievable like builder, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about. And then the palace in itself, um, you know. As always, n not too much <laughs> is left, but I'm gonna show you like what we what we got, and it's it's really a big topic. So I I'm gonna make sure I will do it under 20 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, so just before maybe maybe just before we 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 dive into this, uh, you might wanna consider to subscribe to the channel. Like why not, right? Uh, I've been doing this for the last. Uh, three years I think now like two yeah three years I think like, this is the third year yeah so uh, we will begin the third year I think uh, so so yeah uh, like why not subscribing we, we, we will have so many videos more so yeah Be uh, so one thing I prepared a presentation here so I'm gonna show you here yeah so let me see if it works it should work let me see okay yeah it does so uh, Malkata where is Malkata? Okay, so Malkata is this place here on the west of the Nile, and it's in front of Luxor. So you see, this is Luxor, the city of Luxor nowadays, and uh, Luxor is the mo is the site of of the old, you know, of the ancient Thebes. Now, what the, what was Thebes? Thebes was the ancient capital, of, was the capital of ancient Egypt. Now, obviously, ancient Egypt changed capital over three thousand years, quite a few times, like. The first I think was uh, Memphis, or Abydos first, and then Memphis, and then Hierakonpolis, and then uh, well, uh, um, he Heliopolis, and then and it came back to to Thebes. So a lot of times like changed, but Thebes guys was the was the capital of ancient Egypt, right? So it was really like uh, especially in the New Kingdom, okay, and the Middle Kingdom as well. So. Um, so what 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 can we say about uh, the guy that we are talking about today? So this is the sarcophagus of the, the guy that we're gonna talk about. Is Amenhotep the third? Now Amenhotep the third was the son of Tutmosis the fourth. Now if you know a little bit about uh, about about the history of ancient Egypt, Tutmosis the fourth was basically the guy that expanded Egypt the most. Uh, if he was not the fourth, was the third. Like I can, I might confuse, but you know, it's one of those two to Moses. Uh, so basically, Amenhotep comes along and inherits the biggest empire of the ancient world. I uh, imagine. Okay. So that's that's ne that needs to be said. And then it turns out that this guy would have been the father of Akhenaten. The you know. <laughs> Uh, so this is very crucial because at this point uh, Amenhotep was still uh, respecting the power of the priests of Thebes, which were basically this like, like, how do you say, like, uh, well, it's it, it, they were a superpower <laughs> inside of the capital. Okay, so he was still balancing it, whether Akhenaten, the son, will just lose it. <laughs> like I don't want to. I don't give a damn about the priests and I'm gonna build my own capital in uh, Amarna and I'm gonna worship my own my own, my god my only god uh, this is a story for the next for the next video but uh, so basically it was important to you know that who was this guy I mean not the third and this guy was found like uh, in, in a tomb that, that was not his tomb and then you know but we still have his mummy and uh, he's in the Cairo Museum no he's not in the Cairo he's in the ancient Egyptian civilization museum he's still in Cairo so Amenhotep was one of the most one of the is you, you know in ancient Egypt I think you get like three pharaohs that were like extremely prolific in building you have Ramses II New Kingdom Amenhotep the third, this guy. I would say Amenemat the third as well, and I would say maybe also, oh, I don't know, Joseph maybe. Uh, 
or Kazakhane, but nothing compared to these guys, okay? Nothing compared to these guys. So, in Amenhotep III, what, 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 what he, he left us, uh, apart from the Makata Palace, he left us um, the big... So, he was the responsible guy that started the Luxor Temple, apparently, okay? And he also gave his contribution to expand the um, Karnak complex, okay? Which, you know, was the biggest religious building in the world, uh, of the ancient world. And, um, and, and not just that. So, actually, Amenhotep III didn't just do, you know, didn't just contribute to the Karnak and didn't just begun the Luxor Temple. He also um, be, uh, built his own mortuary temple. You, you know, like, back in the times, pyramids were associated with a mortuary temple and then a valley temple, right? So at this time, they didn't do any pyramid, they didn't do any valley temple, they just did a mortuary temple. But the mortuary temple was extremely big. This was the biggest building ever built by that time in the history of humanity, <laughs> probably. Uh, well, it was at least the, mo what the biggest, uh, at least was the biggest uh, mortuary temple uh, ever built, okay? And this, the statue that you see here, is, the co is one of the two Colossus of Memnon. Now, Memnon was is supposed to be Amen Amen so, <laughs> Amenhotep the Third, and uh, these two statues still that are still there, right? So, but the mortuary temple is gone because he just happened to have built it over um, in, in an area that was not supposed to be built on, and the Nile just flooded it and didn't 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 go very well. So just you know, so this is a little bit of uh, of a view of the Luxor Temple, um, and this is. This is the responsibility of Amenemad the third. Amenemad the third again. Amenhotep the third. Guys, if I keep on <laughs> confusing this <laughs> because it's not easy. Uh, Amenhotep the third. And um, I mean, it's right. It's quite beautiful. You see, actually, the difference between this, like Papyrus's capital, and this uh, is different. So I don't know if one or the other is from Amenhotep the third. So, but anyway. This is actually I'm not sure about it. We might we might do temples of ancient Egypt's like later this year. We we might do that because I, I'm like we are studying ancient Egyptian architecture. Like what? Like we cannot uh, not study temples, right? So we will do it, guys. We will do it. Uh, so apparently, like this is a video on YouTube. You can find it on on YouTube. Is ancient Thebes how it was back then? So you see the Nile here. You see this is Thebes. You see the Luxor Temple the avenue of the sphinxes that led to the Karnak complex. And then at this side, this is what we, uh, we are talking about today. We are talking about this little palace here, <laughs> which is not little at all, and this huge lake that he had built uh, or excavated uh, for, for himself, <laughs> for the, right? And not just that. So if you see, it's one of the, I, I'm not sure if it's this, yeah, it's probably this one. This is the mortuary temple of Amenhotep III, okay? So it's not just that he built his own royal residence palace. He was actually living here, okay? He was living in this place. Uh, but he also did his own tomb, huge, like, tomb here, okay? Uh, just, just so you know. Uh, so, so this is how, this is what's left, oops, sorry. This is what's left of the Malkata Palace, okay? Now, obviously, uh, as we already learned from previous palaces that we studied, we studied the uh, Bubastis Palace uh, of the Middle Kingdom, and we studied the Deir el Balas Palace of, uh, of the dynasty before this one, which is the 18. Uh, so, actually, no, it was... Yeah, so, yeah, so the Deir el Balas Palace was done by the 17th dynasty and then big you know, uh, just happened to be used by the 18th uh, dynasty as well. But so, what's left about this palace? What do we have? So, we have, first of all, this is the main palace of Amenem Amenhotep III. <laughs> Again, I'm still <laughs> confusing. He was living here, okay? So, I I'm gonna tell you about, I'm gonna tell you very soon about this. But, we don't just have that. We also have this palace, which is the North Palace, and this was supposed to be the Queen place so the queen was living here apparently separated because yeah i'm gonna tell you very soon why and uh, actually so amenhotep the third is 
uh, accredited to have been the one of the most equalizer in terms of like uh, giving power to the queen and not just to, to himself he is depicted in statues with the queen sometimes the queen is very small but sometimes the queen is at the same level of all of him so yeah that's a suggestion you know, that he might have been a little bit of a you know equalitarian let's say um anyway um then we got the north village i'm not sure about what the north village actually is i think it might have been the workman village like the village where the people working for the pharaoh like or for the queen or for the palace not for the, mm, but I, i'm not sure about that platform again i don't know what platform that platform is that w- will probably be like a outpost maybe or some i don't know i i can't tell you West Villas. So this is the place where uh, the elite, one one of the places where the elite would have lived uh, in. So let's imagine not the, maybe not the prime minister, right? Not not the not the vizier, but you know powerful people that were working for the pharaoh and for the royal house. And we have uh, I'm not gonna tell you much about this, but it's very interesting because we have three separate villas here, and uh, it's not it's actually quite nice villas. And then we have a series of villas here, which are more like industrial, like uh, it seems like to be more like produ- produced in series. Like they're not, but just they, they look like the, they look like that. So I'm gonna show you very soon. So this is the plan of the royal palace of Amenhotep the Third. Okay, he was living here. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you everything about it. So let's start. The main entrance was the here, the letter A. Okay. So with the letter A, you will enter from here. This is the gateway. Then you will access, obviously, you will access a courtyard. Like in every palace, you access the palace. The first thing you do, you access a big courtyard. Okay, that's a common feature in ancient Egypt. Then a throne would have been here. Now we have many places in this palace where the, the throne will it was supposed to be. Okay, so it's not just here. Uh, but I'm gonna show you very soon. So. This is where uh, maybe the uh, is one of the places where the king would show up. Uh, one of the places. Um, then uh, we don't. We're not super sure about like the letter B and the letter C, the letter E. But we know that, for example, the letter F, the space, uh, it's one of the presentation halls. Okay, he doesn't have just F. He has the letter H and I. This is the main. Uh, Hall entrance, not the entrance. Sorry, this is the main presentation hall. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you very soon. So, but so so first you access, then you access the court, and then you go through this corridor, and then you choose. Uh, if the king was in F, it means that probably. I I don't know. I'm not sure actually because this is the position of the throne being here at the end. It's not really like you would expect the throne to be the other side, right? But I don't. I'm not sure why the throne is in the is in this position. Uh, number E as well. This is w- this was supposed to be for small audiences, okay? Maybe two or three people, right? For a more intimate like um, audience, okay? Because everything that the king was doing here was basically living, eating, and uh, having sex. Uh, why I say this? Well, you see all of these spaces on the north and all of these spaces on the south. These are. Chambers for women. Uh, what we know of is basically that y- there and there are eight, eight uh, of these, right? So you have four in the north and four in the south, okay? And basically, how y- did that work? N would be the bathroom, for some reason, <laughs> okay? K, uh, there is a little bit of a throne here, so you might, you know, exp- you can imagine. And then M would be like a little bit of a storeroom, and uh, P and L uh, is supposed to be a bedroom, right? Uh, one of the two, so maybe L. But anyway, so they, and they repeat, right? So you have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So you will expect like the top eight supermodels of ancient Egypt, maybe. They will, I don't know, I don't know, guys, I don't know. But yeah, this is the harem, okay? Uh, so this is why he probably built the Queen Palace somewhere else, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is yeah, this is actually the first time we we see uh, an ancient um, yeah, an ancient Egyptian palace like 
with uh, with such a layout, right? And so, but a very key element of this place uh, is um, is this huge uh, um, presentation hall. Okay, the H and the I. This is the main throne uh, chamber you would access here. Now, note how separate would be, you know, these two. You know, there is the main hall, and then there is the little like audience one. And that it's very curious because uh, you will not need to separate the two, right? So for some reason they did. Uh, so probably the audience will still be around here, and you will see the king like far, like far in the background, right? Uh, but you're not actually gonna access the chamber because, again, he was uh, holy. He was not just a king. He was also like a divinity for them, right? And this is actually the bedroom. Uh, of uh, Amenhotep the third. Okay, he was sleeping here uh, when he was not sleeping somewhere else. Okay, uh, so yeah, you will just wake up in the morning. Let me go have breakfast, and I'm gonna show up in my in my throne room. Not actually a good. I I wouldn't envy. I wouldn't actually envy. Uh, it's just too much, maybe. Uh, but anyway, we don't. We're not super sure about what the spaces are. Um, are <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna show you very soon. So this is actually the West Villas, the, the, the village where the, that I told you before, where the elite uh, were living. Uh, and you can see it's pretty amazing. Like, look at this plan there, number A, okay? You have an entrance here, which is, you have your own wing here, your own wing here, your own wing. And then you pass through a courtyard, and then you add another, like, bedrooms normally are like this. You have one, one bench, okay? So the bedroom is it's where you see a line normally in the in the room. So one, two, three. Okay. So this is what's left of some walls because the walls now of the villas are like sixty centimeters high, some of them, and you have this uh, pattern of decoration. Okay. So you have these waves. Okay. And waves, I don't know, but waves, you know, it's always. It always come back to the um, origin, uh, the, the 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 myth of um, uh, the origin of the universe. Okay, so I don't know, like if um, it, I don't know the, the symbolic reason behind this, but it's very particular. It's not very often that you see a water um, uh, that you see the wavy uh, decoration on, on on the walls. And we have this. This is one of one of the what, what's left of uh, one of the ceilings. Okay, um, uh, I don't think this was in the main presentation hall. The main presentation hall was with this ceiling. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this was the ceiling of that huge presentation hall. Like, imagine you're in there and you see these eagles like up in your head, like just quite, quite, quite amazing. Um, so, so this is how the palace was found back in the beginning of the nineteen uh, of the twentieth century, and in this place, if I'm not wrong, uh, Flinders Petrie also excavated in this place, but I, I might be, I might be wrong. Um, no, maybe it was Stella, well, maybe it was Stella La Marna, but I'm not sure about uh, about this. But yeah, so this is the reconstruction of the gateway of the letter A, if you remember. And this was a place that was excavated by Peter Lacovara, okay? And preserved uh, by Peter. So thank you, Peter, again. Uh, we just had the episode with Peter. And, um, on my, if you go under podcast in my channel, you see the, the interview with Peter Lacovara. And he is the, was the responsible person that was excavating and um, helping preserve the site. Um, so, so that this is the area of the West Villas. You see that one, two, and three villas here, and you should see a little bit of the Royal Palace on the on the right here. And uh, yeah, well, should be more on the right. Um, what is this? Ah, this is the decoration left. Okay, so you see the yellow, the blue, the red, the white. Okay, and the waves. You see the waves here, like one wave. Yeah. So this is uh, the wall that I was showing you before. Um, yeah, again, this is the entrance, and this was supposed to be the courtyard, and the palace would be here. Like, uh, I don't know, the pictures are not really good, but you can't really find many pictures uh, of this place. 
Uh, although this was the biggest royal palace ever built by its time, so uh, so yeah, so these are uh, this su this is supposed to be the throne, um, one of the thrones. Like I'm not sure if this was the throne of letter I, uh, maybe, but this is what's left of the of the throne uh, structure, let's say. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure about this space. Ah, this is the presentation hall, right? This is supposed to be the number H, uh, and it doesn't look very glorious. But I'm gonna show you soon how it looked like before, uh, back in the times. I found I found this drawing from the Japanese uh, university. I don't remember, <laughs> and I, I I thought was quite interesting. This is how doors will would have been done in ancient Egypt, like timber doors, right? So you will stick, you will you will do this like. Yeah, you understand the drawing, maybe like you have this, the pivot, right? Uh, this is something that we do still nowadays, uh, the pivot system, and it's it's really interesting. But I also had this um, detail of the door, uh, which does the frame of the door, and you also had these little like timber um, beams that sustain the door, uh, sustain the up, you know, above the door. Uh, yeah, so. You see, now this is probably in the West Villas, okay? So this is not the doors of the Royal Palace uh, because they're just too humble, right? <laughs> uh, doors in the Royal Palace, I don't know how they were done. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, not stone for sure. So this is how it <laughs> should have looked like. That This is a, an old drawing. Uh, I saw drawings that are more um, recent and they have a, s a different like ceiling okay the ceiling that uh, you know the, the where the egos are it was supposed to be higher right so it was not supposed to be like just one flat ceiling like this but anyway so you see right this was the presentation hall and and, and that this door would hide the um, would hide the throne i think and this was the, is a reconstruction of the throne. Now I, I I reached out to Frank Monnier and I asked him if he wanted to come to the channel. So let's see if uh, if we make it, uh, we can have this whole story explained by by himself. So this is how it sh should have looked like. This is again is another video uh, on YouTube. You can you can go and watch. Uh, is you see so this is basically in 3D the reconstruction of the palace. And this is how you see this is the main presentation hall that was supposed to be higher, right? And so this is how it would have looked like. Now these are the kitchens, okay? Uh, so kitchens were outside to to, to avoid uh, fire, and these are the storerooms and probably where they kept like horses and stuff. Now you see these are houses of the elite. Now these are the three main houses that we were talking about. Uh, one, two, three, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these were the houses associated with the king, and this is the queen uh, palace. Okay, this one here. Uh, queen Tai T T is pronounced in English. Um, so yeah, the, the palais du roi. Uh, so this was supposed to be right. It's more now. Now it's clear, right? You you would have accessed. Uh, and a very interesting thing is in ancient Egypt is you access a very important space on an axis but you don't access the antechamber on the same axis you want you access the antechamber through uh or through, through another axis through the orthogonal one here okay this is very very like it's something that we c we keep seeing uh, in ancient Egypt and it's one of the most interesting things uh, you can see it, they also use it in mosques and they also use it in churches it's just, just yeah again yeah I think this is everything guys um, so yeah I mean if you if you enjoyed the video uh, like like the video and don't forget to subscribe and uh, the next video is going to be about Tel El Amarna it's gonna take me a full month to study that uh, Akhenaten story and uh, all of that so we covered already Bubastis, Der El Balas, Malkata today and then we will do Tel El Amarna and then we will do just five royal palaces okay we will do a palace in Memphis uh, nothing is left of it but we will do it because it's probably the co the uh, it's very like
cozy. Like, it's super nice. It's, it's an amazing palace. Uh, it's of uh, Meremta, the son of Ramses II. Anyway, I hope uh, this will. Yeah, okay. Just, just, just stop. Stop talk. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye bye.